there's a lot of pictures that are associated with it and then once we do that we can figure out what area that we'd still like to focus on when we go on Saturday and in this area here maybe five or six hilltops or areas that we're like okay those are those are a couple places we definitely want to go and mark a couple of tree stands so Blake's gonna come get me in the morning and it's time to get all this stuff together and uh, excited heading to Ohio tomorrow some scouting. Sweet. Ohio bound, baby. What's up, buddy? How are you, man? Doing great. Hi, Tucker. Wish we could take ya. Huh? I got everything packed and ready to go. Wish we could take ya. I see that. I remember when you sent out a message saying, hey, thinking about doing a possible hunt in Ohio in 2022. Um, just throwing it out there right now. Think about it. Yeah, 2022 turned into 2021 <laughs> real quick. Yeah. We were pretty excited, you know. It and took me about a week until I was like, "What the hell am I gonna wait a year?" Yeah, hey, come on, let's do this shit now, you know. So I've been giving you that countdown for to go to Ohio. Yeah. yeah. Countdown. Hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to drive eight hours to hunt somewhere in a different state. I want to be educated because I want to do the research and the scouting to offer us the best opportunity to see a mature deer. For us to find 10 or 12 solid, solid stands, determine what we think is going to be the best wind direction to hunt that, and then figure out how to get in and out of there without disrupting the that's the, I really think our end goal. I just got to Ohio, got about an hour of light left. We have a spot not far from the campground that we just wanted to do a quick check on, see if there's any possibility of having a place closer that's a little different from what we're gonna be seeing uh, in the public lands that we're hunting in the mountains. So we're gonna get out and take a look for about a quick hour and see if we find anything that's a potential spot to put a tree stand. That's cool. Eight hour drive, a bunch of old ladies yakking all the way here, which is pretty cool. <laughs> we had some time it. to get away from work and talk a bit. Um, we just had a really short amount of time. We set up a tent and came out and took a look at a place that we knew was kind of field and swamps and was gonna be different from the forest areas we we're gonna hunt. Uh, didn't have a lot of time to get out here, but found out that two places we wanted to access, we couldn't get in. Uh, we did see four deer, uh, three small buck and a doe, which was kind of cool for yeah, the first night. Yeah. And then uh, we did find an entrance to the area we wanna to get to. We'll have to explore the other day, and what's nice, got a lot of mature white oaks. That's right. Yeah, we'll get back to the, sit around the campfire and look at the map and see a possibility of cutting one of the days, Saturday or Sunday, a little short to come back out here because it does look very promising. Pizza? Pizza. Beer. Beer. Woo! <laughs> Bird dog. But that, that, I don't know, man. That's huge. It just looks big. Maybe the moons look bigger in Ohio. Hey, 
off, right? Nope. <laughs> I don't even know how to do red. I think I gotta press and hold. Nope, it's pink still. There it is. There we go. Can I dim it? Because we're gonna be sitting right here at picnic tables butchering. All right. That's true. You know, as soon as you get it, we're gonna have to bring freezer paper, Ziploc bags, masking tape, markers. Right. And I literally, as I butcher it, I wrap it, tape it, Ziploc bag, label it, bam. I, I, mean, I food save it, which yeah. I can very easily do. I can just bring my food saver right. bag and vacuum seal it. Yep. I mean, we got the electric, so. If I was to shoot a really nice buck over here, I'm gonna want a shoulder mount. Yeah, see, I don't give a shit. I, I do. I, I, so that's do. something that we need to research, um, right. taxidermist. I, I'm gonna talk to the guy who's the ECO, who's my neighbor. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell him, hey, I'm going out to Ohio, like, what can I do? Like, legally, because I don't want to do anything illegal, obviously. And I understand, I know yeah. what you're talking about, you can't bring any bone in. But, like, is, is there a way where, if I can get it shipped? Is there, like, there's got to be a way. Like, if people go out hunting all the time. you got to like, get, get it done in a taxidermist. Get a taxidermist here. Yep, you have to get a taxidermist here. Right. And once it's totally done. Then I come pick it up. Then you come pick it up or get it shipped. Right. Yes. Because that, then it's processed. It's right. got no no more spinal cord material. It's got right. no brain membranes. Right. And that's stuff you can't bring across the border. So for me, boiling a skull and bleaching it mm -hmm. and pulling out the ear caps and make sure everything's out of the brain cavity, right. as soon as it's all bone, right. it's good to bring across. Right. And then I can finish the European mount at home. Right. Back when we were kids, my uncle... Jeff would call him Pa. Always told stories. And I'm the youngest of my generation of eight. And I mean, I had to be no more than eight, nine years old at this time. And he told this story of the peepers where once you hear the peepers peeping, everything's okay. You have nothing to worry about. But once those peepers stop peeping, that means the big peeper came out. And he's coming for you. <laughs> And uh, I'll never forget. <laughs> you said how old were you? Eight, nine, <laughs> max. Like, I'll, I'll have to, like, maybe talk to Pa and figure out. But, oh, my God. And <laughs> so my cousin Taylor and I walk up to my grandmother's house, which is a short distance, like, you know, maybe 100 yards from my uncle's. And it's just a family road, so it's a gravel road. So we walk up, and it's dark out, and... We're leaving my grandmother's house, and the whole way up, peepers are just chiming off for glory. And we leave our grandmother's house, and we start walking back. And kid you not, those peepers stop peeping. <laughs> and my cousin Taylor just starts on a dead sprint back to his dad's house. Right? <laughs> we we we're not wearing shoes. Okay. No and it's shoes, dark. And it's dark. And. It finally hits me why Taylor is sprinting, and I, mean, I got goosebumps right now telling this story. And Eight years old, your mind's rolling. Oh yeah, the big peepers out to come get us, right? <laughs> and it's just like the bear story. You don't have to be fast; you just have to be faster, faster than, than everybody right, else, right? right? Exactly. So I'm not a fast runner. I passed Taylor like he was standing <laughs> still. I was so scared. I was scared shitless, man. I, I am not joking. Ran into that house screaming and the of course Pa's like yeah yeah, yeah yeah of course Pa's like what's going on the big peepers coming to get us <laughs> and I don't know what he said but he was probably like oh, oh he had to be guys. laughing oh yeah you knew that he probably went back up and told his wife the story just laughing his ass off Good news.
getting in your cooler or anything? Uh, no, I have what I need. Too big bug. Sometimes scouting is a bit frustrating. Our plan this morning didn't work. Uh, we had the bikes, uh, thought it was gonna be a decent forest service road. Uh, got about a quarter mile in and it was all mud. Uh, there was trees down in front of the road. So we totally changed our plan for today, put the bikes back on the top of the trailer and uh, we've gone ahead now to another place where I was actually here in March. Uh, we're going to go back to several stands that are already marked, uh, really sit down and determine which stands are going to be the ones that we're going to try and hunt the most in the fall. Uh, we're going to mark those stands, we're going to figure out proper wind directions to hunt those stands, and also find out the easiest ways to get in and out. So that's our goal. have had up since March and the uh, nice thing is is there's a creek where there's a trail coming in to meet right here and this trail goes up another creek and then we're walking up a ridge where a heavy trail comes down so we've got uh, close to 500 pictures on the camera so we'll look forward to going back tonight on the computer and taking a look at them yeah I'm on this trail right here that parallels the creek how far is that trail down below you there Like four yards? There's a small one right there, but the main one's right here. Okay. And then we've got the intersections of the trails that Y off there, and there's a stream crossing right there. So, yeah, I would say I think that tree is probably your best bet. Yeah, this is a heavily used trail. Okay. So that, that, that that's good right in between the creek and this heavy stuff. Definitely some oaks in here for food. And where did we park? Parked up there, so okay. stand like I'm talking about 75 acres of all pines this way there's this huge trail coming out and there's this ridge that I'm walking across right here following this trail along and this is a little bit of a saddle 
the ravine to my right and a ravine to my left and uh, tons of oaks on this flat right here and I want to get up on this ridge just a little bit so that I can see this whole flat with a 25 or 30 yard shot and so that I can also see down over the edge. So this trail continues right here and I found this nice oak right up here. So a double oak that you see right there. Go ahead and I think I'm going to put a tree stand right there because when you walk over to this ridge right here not only can I shoot this trail on the flat but I also have the ability to shoot down over the southwest side so if there's some southwest winds get some deer over on this side staying out of the wind staying out of the weather well we just got done eating lunch been out here for about four hours and probably just over halfway done so hoping that we're going to be back to the truck give or take around 5 30 and uh bellies are refueled um Got some iPhone chargers on the phones to get through the rest of the day. And uh, we're heading out to finish up, see if we can find another five or six solid stands. Top of this steep ravine, always find these deer trails that are pretty easy for the deer to go ahead and walk across without having to go down in the steep ravines and up the other side. So they wait until they get to the head of the ravine, and it's real easy to get across there as compared to going up and down those slopes. Blake's dropping a waypoint for this tree stand. We found this area, it's an east facing slope right over the top of an oak ridge. It's got trails almost surrounding every side of it, coming down and uphill, trails coming above and coming below. Nice open woods coming out of some pretty thick brows in almost all other directions. Real steep slope down with a gully there, so they're kind of forced to cross up here at the top of this ravine or gully. Got some white oaks, red oaks and black oaks in here. And uh, I think it's definitely gonna be a place that we're gonna put a tree stand to come back up here in November for archery season. Okay, so probably about two thirds of the way done here today, which is nice. It's really a downhill walk to the down this stream and then back up to the truck, but we got to decide what we're going to really focus on tonight. And I think the first thing is figuring out our hike in the morning. Are you good with going to that place near the campground? Oh yeah, definitely. I, I definitely, that was the very promising, like you said, with the swamps and then seeing those, you know, two younger bucks, Yeah. you know, that, 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 that's a good sign there. And then, yeah, that hilltop up there and definitely an access point for it's other easier. people. Yeah. But if we hike up farther and get away from that, I think it's going to be better for us. And I think we can come all the way down to that corner that we tried to get into along the creek the other day and it was too thick. Right. I think when we get in the woods, up and look we down, can get right. all the way yeah. down into that same corner we wanted to get Yeah, to. I do too, because it opened up. It just, we couldn't get right. up through there without getting marred up really bad. But so if we go ahead and plan out tomorrow's hike, then we can um, take today's stands and categorize them. That's yeah. the best, that's second, that's right. third. Put names on them, wind directions, and we don't have to figure out tonight how to get in there. We can do that when we get home. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of looking at the yeah. maps. And, but and while it's fresh in our minds, let's figure out, let's rank them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. And like the top six are the ones that we'll really key on um, while they're fresh in our minds. Your legs good? Oh, yeah, I'm feeling good. Surprisingly good. feeling really good. It's nice down here. Yeah. It's cool. much cooler. Much cooler. It's like 96 degrees today, guys, and it's been a hot one. We've been hammering water, but it's amazing. It's like a 10 to 12 degree difference from coming to the ridge tops down in here. And nice thing is, is the next mile walk down this creek is going to be cooler. Um, I can tell you my toes and knees are a little sore from coming down that last ridge, so I'm happy to walk on some flat mm -hmm. for a while. Definitely. Okay, let's get moving. Let's finish this up so we can go home and have some peach whiskey. Yeah, bird dog. Bird dog. Bird dog. What thing, man? What you do? This is this rub that I wanted to show Blake, and it looks kind of old, but when I was here in March, it was still fresh shavings on the ground under the leaves. 
there's still some fresh shavings on it right now so I know that definitely this was one that was last year when we're sitting down and taking a look at it pretty cool got a couple places we're gonna look at for deer stands here yeah that's pretty deep huh End of 10 miles. Yeah. This oh. last three quarters of a mile. Yeah. Holy moly. My legs are sore. I'm tired. Whoa. That is a welcome sight right there, man. Yeah, it is. What'd you say, 9.5? I'm going to tell you right now exactly what the final distance is 9.73. Got it, brother. Yeah. First day of scouting done. Yes. Learned a lot. What do you think after doing that? Makes you really appreciate wild animals. That's yeah. what it does. Makes you appreciate private property where you can drive your truck <laughs> yeah. within 200 yards of a yeah. tree stand. But it's, it's going to be all that more rewarding when it yeah. comes time to November if we can harvest a nice animal. Tons of good information we got today. We yeah. got time tonight. Shower. Yeah. Good dinner. Uh -huh. Look through it, sit around a campfire. It's yeah. only five o'clock. We got the rest of the night to yeah. chill. We it's gonna be it. good. We yeah, we do deserve it, man. It's it's one of our priorities and things that are important is to not be pressured so much by other hunters. Yeah, I don't want to drive it seven and a half hours out here oh. and have three guys sitting within two hundred yards no. of us, yeah. or somebody walking through the middle of your set five or six times a day. Exactly. Okay, I gotta throw this out here. We're so busy talking about what we did today <laughs> that we turned into our campground. We didn't turn it into our campground. We turned into the state park. We were so busy talking, we went about two and a half miles up this road before we realized we were on the wrong road. So, we could be back at camp having a peach whiskey already, but now we're uh, back on the main road to turn up the campground road, so then we can go have a peach whiskey. A long day, so tired. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're back at the campsite and everything is soaking wet and it wasn't because of rain. We're drying everything out because it was so darn hot today that we sweated through everything we had. I can tell you right now, that first morning we go out, if we're not sitting in the same tree and I'm videotaping, one of us is going to be in that ridge stand one is going to be in that creek stand. Right. But hands right. down, those were the best two we found today. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Go to your satellite, your hybrid, and go to where we parked today. Now go north on that until you see a logging road and a clear cut. I just saw it right there. Right there. Now look, zoom in on that, right on the road. Oh, right there. Yep. We can walk in on that and keep going, keep following that across. And then it goes into another clearing. It looks like the road's still there. See it? Right. Another clearing. Into the woods. And then into the oh. woods, and then you follow that ridge down to that tree stand that I liked at the bottom with the big rub. You follow that point down. And okay. then you follow that point down, we can go right up that other side into that stand up top. Right. I think that's the easiest way to get in there. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to walk on the road most of the way, walk on a logging road, I'd rather yeah. do that than through the middle of the woods. Right. guys Blake and I are up and out on Sunday morning definitely a bit sore after 
almost 10 miles yesterday. Um, went and got some good food last night. Felt awesome to take a shower. Slept in a little bit this morning. We really only have like a 10 minute drive this morning and we're only doing about three miles today. Uh, I'm looking forward to what we're getting ready to do right now though. This, yeah. this is looking really nice with the farmer's fields and um, the hilltop and being close too. So right. it's, it's, it's gonna be... So we'll last see. night we pulled a camera that we had had out there for March and um, really not a whole lot of pictures for the first two months. The promising thing was is in the latter part of the pictures we had on the camera, there was deer in almost every picture and every frame, you know, for like the last month and a half. Oh yeah. Just wasn't a lot of uh, buck sign. Um, plenty of smaller bucks, but we didn't see any big bucks. So that was a little disappointing. We were hoping we were gonna see a couple whoppers on there. Uh, today we're trying to find some public land that is right on the edge of some farmer's fields and just kind of give ourselves a secondary option when we come out here in November. So it's only about a three mile hike this morning. Uh, we actually spent some time Friday night trying to get in here and were unsuccessful, but at least it taught us Friday night how to get in here. So that's yes. gonna make it easier this morning. And uh, hopefully we're gonna find a good place to drop off a camera that we're gonna leave there until November. I saw so many scrapes when I was here in March. Right. I saw so many fresh rubs. There was so much deer sign from the fall when I was here in March and it's still, you know, the environment looked like it did in fall, you right. know, after the snow melted and you exactly. know, now with all leaves and stuff, we're not finding that sign with all the new growth over the summer. trail on this bench between the logging road above us and a creek down below us and we find this in August a fresh scrape and you can tell it's fresh because I got some nice hoof prints right in it there that's pretty cool back out give you an idea small tree a little looking branch above it. So a place that we really thought had a lot of potential right on the edge of private and public land. Um, about a mile walk to get back in here. When we got back in here we found that there's a creek that separates the field from the actual forest we wanted to hunt. There's really no crossings that we see. That white is uh, someone's private stand that they have there on that field. But there is a very large funnel that works down along this creek, along the bottom of this point, and out into a brushy field. So there's a possibility of a funnel right there that deer could be moving across. We're wrapping up here. We set our final stand, put a camera up on it. It was at the base of a creek where there was two clear cuts and the creek was in between. Uh, there was some travel corridors down there in the bottom. Problem was we had to go around the clear cut to be able to get back to this road. Hopefully this road is going to take us all the way back to where our truck is. Okay guys, finally get to the post view from this morning's hike. We planned like 3.2 miles and ended up being over five because we kind of zigzagged back and forth a little bit. Uh, the reason that we wanted to check this place was because it bordered some uh, farmer's fields and everything that we had scouted prior to this was 100% forest. So we wanted to have something just a little bit change of pace if we get back down there in November and find what we're doing in the woods is just not working for us. Uh, Blake found one real solid stand today. I found one real solid stand today. We both found a couple other options uh, that could work, uh, but we also said as well too, is that if we came in and sat in the morning in those two stands that we chose, that middle of the day we could get up and move and look for fresh sign and then because we're being mobile with our climbing sticks and our hang on 
and we can go ahead and set up over some fresh sign that we find in November. Uh, I know we were exhausted at the end. Yes. Pretty beat. Real, real hot, real quick. And some briars. You got to the point where you didn't try to pick them off and you just gotta just go right through them. Yep. Fast life too. So we're on the road now heading home and we're working on talking about some of these stands, naming some of these stands, and uh, also trying to figure out some ideas of ways to get into the stand without um, busting deer out of their beds. Uh, so that's good stuff for us to do on the way home while it's fresh in our mind. And uh, Ohio scouting trip is done. It is. My yeah. scouting for 2021 between New York and PA and Ohio is done. Uh, now for the next, you know, month, month and a half, it's checking some trail cams. It's shooting as much as possible. You know, getting my clothes washed and getting them outside and ready. And, uh, you know, just last thing preparation stuff, considering season is coming up on us in a month and a half. Yep. Pretty excited. Thanks for coming, man. Oh, heck yeah. Thanks for doing pretty much all the work and teach me as much as you have. Well, teaching each other when we're out there, it's much better to have two brains than one. I really appreciate the fact we were both out there doing that stuff at the same time. Mm -hmm. We definitely fed off each other quite a bit. Yep. Okay, guys, we're going to finish off our trip home, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.